The concept of probabilities. What is disconcerting about probabilities is that we make statements about the future which are not firm, and yet are useful. They always boil down to either of two situations. When there is some symmetry or equivalence among the possible outcomes of an experiment, none in particular should surprise us more than any other. On the other hand, for instance, when we have one red ball and a large number of black balls in an urn, and we pick one at random, we can safely plan on picking a black one. But this safely plan does not have exactly the same sense as something sure. So, Another disconcerting aspect of probabilities to a rational mind is that we deal with events without cause. Yet, once again, we shall derive many interesting and useful things about them. We cannot build the usual logical string of events which leads to explaining why we got outcome X or outcome Y. Even Einstein excla exclaimed, God doesn't play dice, to say that uh, he couldn't accept this uh, modeling of the universe with probabilities. However, not only probability theory is useful in many fields, like insurance or finance, construction, but in, ath in atomic physics, it appears to be a fundamental, we can say ontological, feature of the world. So, let's turn now to uh, some techniques about probabilities. First of all, let's talk about equiprobable events. When we have an experiment E and a random variable X, which can have outcomes A1, A2, up to AM, and the outcomes AIs show symmetry, like in a die, then we define, we just first of all define, the probability of each AI as 1 over M, so that they add up to 1. And we note PI, the probability of AI, which is written this way, probability that X is equal to AI is equal to 1 over M. That's the case of equiprobable events, these being the uh, outcomes, and in this particular presentation, uh, is the events. If we throw the die many times, we can observe that each outcome, that is 1, 2, up to 6, will roughly appear one-sixth of the times. So, this is some sort of a vindication of the meaningfulness of attaching theoretical probabilities 1-6 to each possible outcome of the die. You can find nice simulations of uh, throwing or rolling a die, or several dice, by the way, at the following uh, web address, http colon double slash www.stat.sc for South Carolina dot edu slash tilde west that the name of a teacher slash java html and uh, you have a selection of uh, applets and one of them is called the central limit theorem applet that's the one i recommend that you visit and here is an example of what we can produce with it we can roll for instance a die ten thousand times and plot the uh, frequencies of each outcome of 1, of 2, of 3, 4, 5, and 6. Here, the vertical axis is a count of each of these outcomes. And as you can see, we've done this experiment once, rolling a die 10,000 times, and we have roughly the same frequency of 1s, 2s, 3s, up to 6s. Moreover, such uh, uh, practical equivalence of the frequencies, that is the equivalence of the uh, experimental frequency, 
is itself uh, an illustration of the second case we mentioned. Remember, in an urn you have plenty of black balls and one red ball. And if you pick at random, you shake the urn and then you plunge your hand into the urn without looking and you pick a one ball at random, you can safely assume that you'll pick a black ball. As I said, this is an illustration of that fact. Let's explain why. Indeed, if we consider the experiment F, which is itself 10,000 rolls of one die, F is an experiment producing a series of rolls, and we have 6 to the power 10,000 possible outcomes because the first outcome can be 1 up to 6, the second one up, 1 up to 6, etc. And it so happens that most of these huge number of outcomes have more or less equal frequencies of 1s, 2s, up to 6s. So we just picked one of them. To get a feel of this fact that I just described, look at three tosses of one coin. We can, there are eight possible series of tosses. Head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, tail, and then also tail, head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, and tail, tail, tail. These are the eight possible series. This is the first toss, the second toss, and the third toss. And as you can see, most of these series of three tosses have more or less as many heads as tails. To many devices, we can attach physical probabilities like we did for the die. For example, here is the wheel of chance that I've already described. To the sectors of the wheel of chance, we can attach probabilities proportional to the angles. Uh, it's a, a simple uh, consequence of equiprobabilities. Think of uh, the disk split, split into 360 angles of one degree. Well then, uh, these sectors correspond to just uh, groups of uh, uh, elementary angles of uh, one degree. Let's think man not now to the same kind of wheel of chance, but somehow unknown. Suppose I have a wheel of chance myself with sectors and payoffs, but you don't know the values. You, uh, you don't know the probabilities, that is the, the angles, and you don't know the cash flows, that is the payoff that I just showed. We can still play the game. You pay a ticket, we spin the wheel, and you win the payoff. If we play many times this game, you can figure out the possible outcomes, if necessarily, and you can even estimate their probabilities, although you will not know the so-called theoretical probabilities. Well, the modeling uh, in, uh, of probability, probabilistic experiments is this. We shall consider that in any random experiment, and in particular in the stock market where the experiment is wait one year, there are theoretical probabilities underlying, that's the term, underlying the experiment, just like in the unknown wheel of chance. And we will be in the situation where we can only play many times. <laughs>